Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 28, 2016. This is from my friend Gary J. who sent this. This is paper thin printed solar cells could provide power for 1.3 billion people. The cost of solar cell has declined dramatically. It started in 1977 at 74 at uh, 74 cents, no, at $40 per watt in uh, 1977 and dropped to 74 cents per watt in 2013. This trend is expected to accelerate. Um, these solar cells being that they're printed and they're on flexible film will be much more easily transported. They started out when they were first being made at about an efficiency of 3% and now they've increased to 20% efficiency. Um, one of the guys talking about it says, I've witnessed firsthand how the technology has enabled urban poor communities in India to access off-grid electricity, says Scott Watkins of Korean form Kyung In synthetic. Its success is due to its cost effectiveness and simplicity. Um, they still say the mass production and distri distribution is not without obstacles while the panels are inexpensive to produce. Um, it requires a capital investment for the printer to actually print them and the panels right now the way they're created can be vulnerable to moisture and uh, they may lead to uh, lead can contamination if uh, the uh, panels become broken. So um, they're working on different kind of coatings to be able to, be able to deal with those possible uh, future problems with it, but hey, hope it does work out. Really great for the third world countries to be able to get solar cells in easily. And this one is something coming up by the end of this summer, most possibly by uh, September or October. Uh, China, if a lot of people don't realize that China is actually um, going to create what is going to be the world's largest single dish radio telescope very soon. It's a 500 meter called FAST. And let me give you the name of it here, what it stands for. FAST stands for 500 meter aperture spherical telescope and although it's not technically I mean it, they could make it spherical but these panels that uh, make the shape of the dish they can actually move in place and make it whatever type of parabolic uh, type of dish they need to be able to focus so um, this is part of the military space program and uh, so China looks to come online with that uh, really soon and uh, I don't know as more and more places are doing stuff like this and getting ahead of us it kinda makes me feel that you know we need to kind of get our act together as far as research. I mean, we lost the fact we could have had a, a cyclotron even bigger than the uh, one, the CERN uh, one, the Texas Big Dig, they called it. We could have had that, and, uh, you know, we could be working on a new radio telescope ourselves, but instead China's ahead of us on this. So, oh, well, we'll see what happens when it comes online in September or October of uh, this year, and uh, more and more scientists will probably be leaving and signing up to go work there, just like a lot of Scientists from the U.S. signed up and uh, left to work on the CERN telescope. Hope we can finally, finally get a budget in place and start doing some research in the United States again. And this next one's from Silence and Science Daily. In changing oceans, cephalopods are booming. Cephalopods are octopuses or octopi, I guess you would call them. They can also be cuttlefish or squid. And for some reason, the way the ocean is changing right now, um, they don't seem to be having any problem about it. They seem to be uh, growing in population. Uh, humans have changed the world's ocean in ways that have been devastating to many marine species. I know the corals and stuff like that, but according to new evidence, it appears the change has so far been good for cephalopods, the group including, as I said, octopus, octopus cuttlefish, and squid. Uh, the consistency was the biggest surprise, says Zoe Doubleday of Australia's Environment Institute at the University of Adelaide. Cephalopods are Notoriously variable and population abundance can fluctuate wildly, both within and among species. The fact we observed consistent, long-term increases in three diverse groups of cephalopods, which inhabit everything from rock pools to oceans, is remarkable. So there's some positive uh, being seen from that, too. Maybe if they can find out some information as to why they're thriving, maybe it would help us to uh, learn a little bit more about the ocean. And last up, this is from my friend Tony. Um, he sent in some stuff before, but uh, he sent in this cool video. I, I've, I've watched it before, but I've never actually played it on the TDD report, so I'm going to play it without sound so that they don't hit me up for a copyright. They might anyway, but um, no, no better way to end the program than a robot riding a bicycle, and it's really cool. Uh, never heard anything if they're going to sell it or anything like that. If they do, it's probably going to be ungodly expensive, but anyway, we'll end the show with a bicycle riding robot, and take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.